The one thing you can guarantee when meeting other people is that consciously or subconsciously, you will very quickly form an opinion as to whether you like or dislike them and decide if you want them to be part of your tribe. Well, research has found that we form an opinion of other people in the first seven seconds. So understanding how our behaviour is perceived by others is the best place to start when trying to build the most positive and productive relationships. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to look at how relationships clash or complement to help you understand your own observable behaviours and manage how you are perceived by others to become the person that you want to be. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, now is the best time to do it because I'm going to be talking all about you and the people around you. Today, let's talk about understanding the introvert personality and how you are perceived by others. The best way to find out who you are and why you behave the way that you do and also how you're perceived by other people is to have your full personality profile done. Now my report comes with a one hour one to one feedback session where I will help you to understand more about yourself than you ever knew before. So if you're interested in finding out all about yourself email me with the words tell me who I am to gain more information. For some reason, people often see introversion as a disadvantage over extroversion. Extroverts appear to have all the fun and their lively, attention-seeking personalities often allow them to reap all the promotions, all the popularity and all the recognition. But introverts, on the other hand, they often get passed over and have their valuable work unnoticed. But we all know the expression of stand back and look at the bigger picture. Well, whilst the extroverts are right in the middle so they can't see the wood for the trees, the introverts are the ones that we often find on the outside looking in and that places them in the perfect position to see what's going on and also to have many of the answers. Introversion is on a spectrum. So if I said the colour green, for example, there's a whole host of variations from light green to dark green, from pale to vivid. So calling yourself an introvert isn't a simple and straightforward label. And not only that, whatever shade of introversion you are, your life experiences can significantly affect your personality. So it is possible and more often than not likely that you will change or shift on the spectrum throughout your life. I discussed in a previous video, which you can actually watch up here, on how most people are not purely introverted or purely extroverted because they fall somewhere in the middle of this horizontal continuum with characteristics of both. And going back to this colour analogy, it's only when the characteristics are so strong on either end of this spectrum that you can truly call yourself either an introvert or an extrovert. So for the majority, we will all have shades of both these observable behaviours. There are introverts all over the place who have elements of extroversion in their personality and love performing or throwing parties. And I'm the classic example of an extrovert who loves nothing more than shutting out the world from every now and then to have some peace, quiet and solitude when I just feel everything's getting too much. The term introvert and extrovert was first described by psychologist Carl Jung back in the 1920s and he referred to the difference in characteristics based upon how they regain and use energy. He described introverts as quiet, reserved and thoughtful individuals who lose or give away their energy, so they prefer environments with this minimal stimulation as they need time alone to recharge. The last thing they want is to be the centre of attention so introverts don't seek out the, you know, the spotlight or social events as it uses up too much energy too quickly and it would leave them feeling exhausted and drained. Extroverts on the other hand are described as the life and soul of the party because they're constantly looking for other people for interaction and for conversation. Extroverts need more of an instant fix, so they use the energy of the people around them to recharge, which means that they look for the busy and crowded environments to gain their stimulation. But whilst the extrovert wouldn't miss out you know, on a night out with friends, the introvert, like a battery, knows when they've used up all their energy and they need to escape and recharge and reset. So for the introvert, periods of solitude and quiet are crucial to their health and happiness which makes the idea of being home alone a relief rather than being a fear. 
But the time that they use to recharge the batteries isn't wasted time because they're not sat doing nothing. The introvert will love, you know, reading, gardening, crafting, writing, baking cakes or watching movies. The introvert's life isn't about doing nothing. It's about doing it alone. So if we know that these personality traits are not an all or nothing, how can you find out which side of the spectrum is your most dominant? In other words, are you a green or yellow or more of a yellowy green? Well, the only way to truly know all the individual characteristics of your own behaviour without guesswork is to have your own personality profile. And you can find further details of how to do that in the description box below. But for now, you can look at all the characteristics of each and almost do a tick box process. So let's have a look at the characteristics of an introvert and you can see which of these are most like you. It is both untrue and unfair to say that introverts don't work well with others, but it's also true to say that introverts are often happier and work best when they work alone. And this is because introverts prefer the isolation that enables them to retreat and focus on this task at hand rather than navigate the social aspect of working in group settings. So if the thought of working in large groups or even open plan offices makes you feel quite overwhelmed, then the chances are that you are more of an introvert. When it comes to friendships, introverts place focus on quality of quantity because they enjoy talking and getting to know others and they prefer a smaller group of friends. Because for the introvert, getting to know a few people really deeply and forming high quality relationships is far more comforting than having this huge circle of so-called mates. The introvert also needs time to work things out in their minds before making firm decisions and putting their plans into action. So you will also find the introverts have this very active inner thought process and they spend time on self-reflection, which to others can be seen as daydreaming. But this is also a sort of survival mechanism because it allows the introvert to almost escape or zone out of any situations that are too chaotic and too uncomfortable. The introvert hates being put on the spot or put under pressure to make a decision without the time that they need to consider all the options. So they find it much easier to voice their thoughts and opinions as written text rather than the spoken word. Instead of just blurting out a series of random words like the extrovert without any consideration or thought, the introvert needs to think through their comments and feel confident in the response that they're going to give. So in conversation, they may take mental notes and focus intently on what the other person is trying to express, as opposed to simply waiting for their chance or opportunity to speak. Introverts are generally more inclined to be polite and considerate of the impact of their behaviour on other people. So whilst introverts may be judged for their lack of participation and being quiet, the phrase, if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing at all, is definitely in their favour. Unlike the extrovert who has, you know, a little filter, when, little filters when it comes to speak, the introverts will rarely be accused of being arrogant, obnoxious or disruptive. And because introverts value their space, both physically and energetically, they tend to respect the space of others. So the majority of introverts are fairly independent and don't crave all the attention. Wherever you fall on this introversion extroversion spectrum is what we call your comfort zone. So trying to force yourself to be something you know that's not you is bound to cause stress and anxiety. The key is to first of all understand exactly where you are and what that means to you and the people close to you. So with the right support you can learn how to amend and adapt your behaviour in order to build the most positive relationships both in your personal and professional life. But wherever you are, just remember that your personality is you and it's the most wonderful part of who you are. To gain your personalised personality and behaviour report, email me with the words, tell me who I am for more information. Thank you so much again for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, do it now. Don't forget to like, comment and share this video. Do take care and I'll see you all next time.